Hey guys, my name is Lynn. I am a registered nurse. Welcome back to my channel and my channel's focus on nursing exams. I recently started an A with travel nursing job in an acute rehab facility and I see so many different things in the rehab from acute hospitals. Many of you guys are not very familiar with the rehab. It's a bit different from hospitals. Rehab is a facility that help patients go back keep or improve abilities that they need for their daily lives. So I can see so many multiple sclerosis patients over there. They all come in for physical conditioning deterioration reasons. So our lovely physical therapists and occupational therapists can work with them so our patients can improve. So today we are going to do some practice questions about MS and this topic is going to be on your next nursing neuro exam. MS always have a big portion in the nursing neuro exam. So remember to stick to the end of this video and practice all of those questions. Question number one, there is a young female patient who has been diagnosed with MS. As her nurse, what should you include in her education sections? Select all the apply. One, MS is an autoimmune disease. Two, MS is more common in women than men. Three, if one of your parents or siblings has had MS, you are a higher risk of developing MS. Option 4. MS is an acute and curable disease. Option 5. The onset of MS usually occurs among teenage time. And option 6. Asian, African or Native American descent had higher risk than Northern European descent. I know you can answer them right. The right answers are 1, 2, and 3. The cause of multiple sclerosis is unknown. It's considered an autoimmune disease in which of the body immune system attacks its own tissue. In the case of MS, the immune system malfunction destroys the fatty substance which is called myelin. Myelin calls and protects the nerve fibers in the brain and also the spinal cord. Option 2 is also correct. MS is more common in women than men. I have been a nurse for almost two years. I saw quite a lot of MS patients at hospitals. But I only saw one male MS patient and that was at the rehab facility that I work at. I still remember I opened the door and I saw a male who was sitting on the wheelchair. The first thought I have was like, oh, I must went into the wrong patient's room. And I went out and I checked on the room number again. I was in the right room. I said to him that I thought I was in the wrong room because I have never seen a male MS patient patient before. Option 3 is also correct. Option 4 is wrong. It says MS is a cure and curable. Unfortunately, there is no cure for MS. Although treatment can help prevent remissions and prevent exacerbation. Option 5 is wrong. MS can occur at any age, but onset usually occurs around 20 and 40 years of age. Option 6 is also wrong. Why people have higher risk than other people? Question number 2. A patient who has diagnosis with MS asks for the nurse if there are any conditions or activities that may exacerbate MS. What is the response by the nurse? Select all the apply. Option 1. Pregnancy. Option 2. Heat. Option 3. Urine retention. Option 4. Fatigue by a stressful family issue. Option 5. Swimming. I know you guys got it right again. The answer are 1 and 2 and 4. Pregnancy is a very stressful thing and fatigue also he will worsen MS symptoms. Urine retention is quite common for MS patients because neurogenic bladder. It doesn't lead to exacerbations of the symptom. 
Swimming is encouraged because it's weightless and uh, it's cooling of the nerve. Question number three. A patient has had MS for 10 years and has received various drug therapies. What is the primary reasons why the nurse has found that it's difficult to evaluate the efficiency of the drugs that the patient has used? Option one, patient develops intolerance to many drugs. Option two, patient require multiple drugs simultaneously. Option three, all of drugs have long onset times. Or option four, patient experience spontaneous remissions from time to time. Evaluating drug effectiveness is very difficult for MS patients because a lot of them has episodes of remission and exacerbation. So option 4 is correct. Question 4. What should a nurse suggest to help a patient with MS avoid episodes of urinary incontinency? 1. Limit fluid intake. 2. Establish a regular voiding schedule or option 3, insert an enduring urinary caster or option 4, administer prophylactic antibiotics as ordered. My answer is option 2, establish a regular voiding schedule. Why patients with MS will develop a urinary incontinency? Because their urethral muscles are not strong anymore. So limiting fluid intake and giving antibiotic has nothing to do with this. And as a nurse, we need to make sure our MS patients drink six or eight glasses of fluid, primary water each day. This will fill their bladders normally and decrease bladder infections. And inserting a catheter is the last thing we want to do because it just increases the risk for infection. So establish a regular voiding schedule is a good way to go. And at my rehab, we put the patients on commodes every four hours during the daytime. People with MS always develop bowel or blood issue. The male patients I have, we have a chit chat a little bit and he told me that he liked a motorbike riding. But after his MS got worse and worse, he always wants to stop and go to the bathroom while they are riding on the road. He had a lot of urgencies and when he felt it, it always just too late. And then he made a not so smart decision and that was decrease his fluid intake. So if he didn't drink that much of fluid, he doesn't have to go to the bathroom so frequently. But he didn't think about like decreasing water intake, his urine will become super concentrated. And later on he developed a few UTIs and even developed, hold on, this word I just cannot pronounce. It's called pyelonephritis which is kidney infection. Hi, my name's Bella, and my mom promised me if I do this question for you, I'll get a cookie. So, question number five. Which symptoms does the nurse anticipate an exacerbation of MS to experience? Number one, scanning speech. Number two, dilopia. Number three, nystagmus. Number four, intentional tremors. Number five, resting tremors. Or number six, mental retardation. The answers are 1, 2, 3, and number 4. So, dilopia, also called double vision, nystagmus is involuntary rapid rhythmic eye movement. Option 5, resting tremor, 
is a symptom of Parkinson's patients. Patient with MS will experience all of those symptoms because of demlinalination. MS patient's intelligence remains intact. Question number six. A MS patient called RN to his room and complains that his leg is experiencing painful and uncontrollable muscle stiffness. Which PRN medication should the RN administer to help this patient? One, baclofen. Two, amethidine. Three, Ritalin. And four, prednisone. I hope your answer is baclofen. Baclofen is used to treat pain and certain type of spasticity, muscle stiffness, and tightness. And baclofen is in the class of medication called uh, muscle relaxers. Corticosteroids such as oral prednisone and IV uh, solumedrol are prescribed to reduce nerve inflammation. Amethidines and retalines are medications to, to reduce fatigue. Question number seven, which statement by a patient with MS indicates to the nurse that this patient needs further education? One, I will get plenty of rest. Two, I used a straw to drink liquids. Option three, after my exercises, I will sit in a sauna room to relax my muscle. Now, option four, I plan to use an incontinency pad when I go out. The answer is number three. In some MS patients, their symptoms often worsen when the body temperature rises. Avoid exposure to heat and use devices such as cooling blankets or a cooling vest uh, can be very helpful. The exercises part is right though. Uh, regularly exercises can help improve strength and muscle tones, balance, and coordination. Swimming and other water exercises are very good options. Using a straw to give the patient more control of the fluid intake, prevention aspiration. Bladder splinter muscles for some MS patients are sometimes not controlled perfectly. So when they laugh, they might leak. So using a pad can avoid embarrassment. Okay, and that's that for today's MS video. And last week, I have videos about spinal cord injury. There is a car will pop out here or there. Remember to watch that video in case your nursing professor decides to include the spinal cord injury at the neuro exam. I will see you next time. Bye.